for those who are in the correct workshop, it's myself and Fabio um, Bali and um, Professor Jean Bousquet as well, of course, who many of you will know. I would like to discuss what in Aria we would like to do is to embed biodiversity in digitally enabled patient-centered care pathways for our diseases. We have started in rhinitis, we are now in asthma because there are plenty of patients with asthma. So we think that we need to go beyond care pathways in order to go also with the WHO AQG. So first of all, our program is now six years old and it is a guidance to 2018 good practice. It is area digitally enabled, integrated person-centered care for rhinitis and asthma. And it is approved by DG Santé as a digital tool for citizen empowerment and for person-centered care. We are also in process to be accredited by OECD. Thanks to DG Santé. Also, we are a member of GARD. So what I've done is not only for Europe, it is globally, and this is a global uh, a guard demonstration project. So on the same time, we are EU-based, probably OECD, because I received an information that we should be accredited when they will have enough good practices and also guard. So it's a global. So what we have done, it is that when 27 countries, not only in Europe, when 18 languages, we have 35,000 users, now we have, well, sorry, 44,000 users and over 400,000 days. It is fully GDPR, it is free on Android and iOS, and it is based on extraordinarily simple questions. Because if you want to be global, you need simple questions, otherwise it's impossible. How much are your allergic symptoms bothering you today? No symptoms, eye symptoms and asthma and we're able to validate asthma by dyspnea and other tests. The strength is that for all countries, all the medications for rhinitis, asthma, and soon COPD are embedded in a scroll list, and patients have to just do that. Well, these are the countries where we are. We are also now in Hungary and Lebanon. So we are in some countries which are not fully developed, like Colombia, uh, Brazil, Argentina, we are in Japan, Australia, Mexico, Canada, and then in Turkey and other European countries. So this project is fully developed among 130 centers in 18 languages. What we wanted to do is next generation care pathways, not only guidelines, but care pathways. And we published it two years ago in clinical and transactional allergy because I'm trying to publish everything we do either as science or as... So what is the problem? Well, in 2014, and there in this um, paper, there were two ministers of health, we proposed integrated care pathways for airway disease. Because when patients have rhinitis or asthma symptoms, usually they don't take the treatment. As soon as they have symptoms, they take anything. So we need self-care. We need also pharmacists, and we have done a large study in pharmacies with Australia and Portugal. Then they go to the GP, then the specialist, and eventually they may end in emergency care. So we need to have a guided self-management with hemp health. Well, very simple. First of all, self-care. It is patient participation, health and literacy, but mostly it is behavioral science because people, even doctors, do not follow guidelines and it's not health and literacy. It is behavioral science, and we want to go to this direction. We have a large group on area in the pharmacy, because at least for asthma and rhinitis, many patients end in the pharmacy. And then we have done area care pathways for immunotherapy, but most interestingly, next generation great guidelines. Guidelines are made by the triangle, which is the ivory tower, and they are not applicable to patients, because patients don't, don't want them. So what we have done with the 40,000 patients in file, in fact, to analyze 17,000 and 360,000 days, 
were able to identify what the patients were doing. They do not follow guidelines. They do not follow a physician um, a prescription. And then to, compi to combine the great guidelines with real world data obtained by mask. The, this approach is the first one because we used, uh, uh, well, we used a consensus approach. And now with the real data in 17,000 patients are going to, com to combine this. And it is the first time this is done according to my good friend, Holger Schoenemann from McMaster. Like However, what we need is not only the medical approach, but the non-medical approach towards planetary health. And in fact, the Finnish allergy program is more than medical. We need to integrate IT tools to promote physical activity, nutrition, and others. We also need to include biodiversity. And we need to integrate all these tools in air pollution neurobiology in order to include this in the care pathways. And this is what we're doing nowadays with an EU project. So we already had the first EU project, which was Polar, Impact of Air Pollution on Asthma and Rhinitis. It was an EIT Health project. And as you know, EIT Health is the largest R&D project in the world. And again, this was on the transformation of health and care in the digital single market. And what we did, in fact, was a meeting during a very important meeting on planetary health. This ended by the Helsinki Declaration 2020, Europe That Protect, published in the Lancet Planetary Health. And this meeting was held by the Finnish presidency of the EU, Digital Research and Development in December 2019. And we tried to understand how MASK, our project, is a proof of concept for airway diseases in planetary health. And this was done with the presidency of the EU, Magvia, Gard, the reference site collaborative network of the EU. So it was a multi-centric document. I'm going to give you just an example. Goals for healthcare of the Finnish allergy program and digital health. So these are the indicators and what we have done in order to that, and this is published. For example, to prevent allergy, to improve tolerance, to improve allergy diagnosis, to reduce work-related allergies, to focus on severe allergies and treating time. So, in fact, what I would like to do today and to say today, it is that we need to go beyond a medical care pathway to a global care pathway in order to sustain planetary health and to do this. And we have also two projects. One is a new project on, it is in the area of Marseille. In Marseille, there is a, an important petrochemical industry. So we're going to compare allergy and asthma with the petrochemical industry and other pollution. And also we're doing this, this globally because we have uh, area is in 92 countries. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Professor Bousquet. That's, um, I think that whole point of um, patient empowerment and involvement and um, sharing of these success stories is so important. And, one of the um, one of the outcomes of this workshop is we talked about is hopefully to have that central um, digital repository on the guard website where we can actually share these links and who the key contacts are um, to really make those those global connections and have it as that one site. Um, I think that's really important. So perhaps um, it'd be good to um, go into your um, presentation. We have questions and answers following sort of both of those in the interest of time, Fabio, because I think that both yours and Professor Bousquet's um, presentation will have um, a few questions and answers which are, which are good to reflect this whole digital workshop. Um, so would you like to share yours and present? Yes. My idea today is to present shortly like uh, series of initiatives that can be freely reproduced, uh, adapt and repaired uh, to move away from like the traditional um, competitive approach. So um, just as an introduction, some quotes like uh, Elion Sporpostrom was a uh, first woman awarded uh, the Nobel in economics, uh, spoke about the importance of 
uh, users and their ability to better uh, take care of collective resources um, even better than, than corporations or the state. And she proposed that a goal of public policy should be to bring out the best of humans. So to, to create uh, institutions that can help us be together. And then we have uh, studies that show that the open source methodology and approach, so sharing resources, materializing knowledge, is really uh, enabling us to cut the cost by 10 to 100 times. So it's really a, a good impact and it shows that we could really achieve health for everyone if we decided to change a bit the, the approach. And Lucas Winter said it doesn't need a fundamental changes in the system, in the business models, but it's just to, to change the way we, we innovate and to change the, the model of uh, intellectual property. Um, here is just a, a short uh, overview. So health as a business has a limited number of employees. It's black box, it's excluding. Whereas if we, if we develop comments, then we can call on the, on the global uh, availability of people. We can co-create together iteratively, so uh, innovate faster. And we help others also improve the, the designs and the, the work we are doing. So uh, just to go shortly, I just wanted to show you uh, a diversity of initiatives that are uh, open source, uh, starting with disease management. Uh, this one, you may have uh, heard of it. It was done in early uh, March, 2020. Uh, and it was this uh, group in Italy who pro pro proposed to print a valve to use a snorkeling commercial mask to help uh, hospitals in, uh, in shortage. Um, here is an Indian initiative. And it's quite interesting because in 50 days, they mobilized communities around 42 cities uh, to create masks. To, they released uh, uh, face shields, sorry, they released 1 million face shields in two months. And they work on, on different projects, including this uh, oxygen concentrator, which plan and design you can also find uh, online. Um, you also have uh, ventilation machines. There are different like uh, initiatives going on on, on that uh, approach. And uh, Polyvent, one of the one who was uh, most advanced, decided to move away a bit from creating a respirator uh, to, to creating a system where people can uh, mutualize their, their, their knowledge and also see, okay, I don't have this part in my, in my country, in my, in my area. So how can I replace it by something else that I can better access to? Um, we have also uh, material for uh, doing PCR tests, as well as uh, some initiatives uh, I just present to, uh, to repurpose uh, drug and make them uh, much more affordable. So this one, this one is uh, built by former uh, MSF uh, physicians and, and uh, medical care professionals. And it's very interesting because if you go on their website, you always have the links below. You, you will have the presentation to get more uh, details. Uh, here you see that you have all the protocols uh, freely available. You have uh, the number of people recruited in real time almost, so day plus one. So it's really another way of, of uh, doing uh, medical research. Uh, in disease prevention, some example, of course, you may know the hand rub, uh, uh, democratized by Didier Pité uh, in Switzerland. Um, here is a toolkit to um, uh, segment the, the lungs when you do a 3D um, scans. Another is this mask, which I just have a, it's a prototype, but uh, yeah, the idea is that um, people who cannot hear you uh, would of course need to see your lips and they are prototyping um, a way to make it uh, easier for everyone, also for people in education to, to keep the emotional contact the, um, with that. Um, here is another model uh, also developed in Geneva. It's a small sensor to measure a pollution. The idea is that you could put it on bikes or on, on the buses or in your backpack and just start to map a bit where you are going and see whether you could find alternative ways to, to travel with less, uh, air pollution. And um, on the IT systems, this is a very interesting uh, ecosystem for uh, managing hospitals, managing patients, that is also open source. So of course you need time to implement it, to, to, to put it in place, but the software is free. You don't have to pay for licenses. You don't have to pay for uh, support. 
so it's of course much more affordable than if you if you work with uh, other like uh, closed source alternatives. And uh, last, to go more into uh, longer like um, health promotion and, and well-being, uh, of course, our initiative, uh, Breathing Games, uh, we have now released two games for children with asthma in about uh, 12 languages. And these you can use, you can develop them, you can um, translate them further, you can change everything you want in it. And we also try to develop some uh, sensors to make the, the breathing exercise uh, more fun. Um, the, the aim now is to do like international, in, international research. So if you are interested in that, you can uh, go to the website or, or just write to me. Um, another uh, approach that we miss sometimes in, in uh, traditional medicine is, is, is like all this natural approach to reconnect to the, to the soil and to what is available in our environment. So here is a guide with uh, recipes you can do on your own. Um, and the last one I wanted to uh, put in it, it's more uh, on the social support because I feel like sometimes uh, we don't have space to be heard or to, to speak what really concerns us in, in medical uh, uh, facilities. So here is a, a way to create spaces in different places where people can come, can express their needs, they can create, they have free material at disposal and they have no uh, goal that is set for them. So if they just want to speak, if they just want to create, they just come and they can uh, find some, some social support to, to yeah, feel a bit better. Um, so next step, uh, which I would propose to, to move towards this uh, open source approach is to integrate open source as an equal requirement in medical research methods. Uh, yesterday I mentioned that, for example, the Swiss COVID tests um, cost $2 to produce, but it's all $12. So we can ask ourselves whether it's ethical to, uh, for any company to make so, 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 such profit on, on um, uh, really needed uh, resources. A second uh, element is to review a bit the way regulatory uh, is done, to move away from centralized uh, processes that are only affordable by, by multinationals, to maybe having uh, certain units that can um, acknowledge and, and validate what is done by communities and, and provide them with the label needed for, for access to people who need them. And the third and last thing is to really try to develop local capacity for production and distribution, also moving away from a centralized approach that is closed to having more like uh, flexibility in, in the different countries. Um, so here is the link where you can find this presentation to also edit it if you want to add other projects. And uh, yeah, that was it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Fabio. Um, are there any questions? Um, for either of the either of the the talks or any discussion points around um, these innovations or ideas, I, have, I, have, I, have, I do have some questions to share. Can I just? But well, uh, you've made my day. Two very inspiring talks, I must say. Really, really great. Um, I'd like to ask Professor Buski, <clears throat> what what are the <clears throat> current uh, uh, limitations or I would say the weakest, uh, the, the weakest points in terms of uh, of mask. I mean, where do we need to gather more more data? Uh, I, I would put to you that possibly we need more data regarding um, elderly patients, and, and possibly also from certain uh, areas of the world, regions of the world, namely in Africa. So I'd like to know um, because things need to be tailored. I, so am I right in 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 uh, possibly saying that uh, these are two communities that probably we need more data about. And then I'd like to ask Fabio, well, this, is a, this was a most inspiring talk as well. I'd like to ask Fabio um, to, because it, it didn't come across quite clearly to me, what is the extent of uh, actual uh, citizen science in this context? I mean, uh, I, I can understand that you have sort of a institutionally driven uh, questions that are put up, but what about actual patients, you know, in, in full open science and, and, well, citizen science, I'm sorry. Can you uh, elucidate me on that? Thank you. Should, uh, should we start you. with the first one? <laughs> Thank you, Luis. Excellent comments as usual. 
Well, first of all, you should go to, to PubMed today. There is a paper in Puglia where we have tested specifically old age people. So we have done that, of course, not enough, but it's done. That is to say how old age people answer to mask. Africa is more complex because you need a smartphone. And I know that many people have a smartphone. We also need to target our, well, our app to this country because even though it is very simple, I'm not sure that we can get the medication used in the country in Africa. And we need that as well. So old age people, we, start to understand because Maria Teresa Ventura was excellent and she has a specific allergy in Jebra tracks. So we have done it and we have enrolled something like 150 patients. And we tested why they want and what they want, why they didn't like something and what they want. So, you know, it is a always real life study. Africa is more difficult. Thanks a lot, John. Um, yes, regarding citizen science, uh, I would say uh, some of the projects really started by engineers, uh, for example, the, the ventilators. Uh, some were more started by um, physicians, like the, the vaccines uh, approaches. Uh, and some were started by makers, like the, the mask uh, was really started by a community that initially creates uh, 3D printed prosthesis and gives them for free. Um, and they all tried to really include a variety of, of people uh, from the medical field, from uh, engineering field, from the social science. So I feel that's an important part. Um, and of course, these projects may, may, may be led by, by more uh, an organized or a network at least, but everyone is still free to, to reproduce them and, and continue them. Uh, usually there's a license that requires you to also share what you improve on this project, but anyone in any country could uh, take ownership of them and, and build them. So I think that's another way to really try to engage people and, and yeah, build this community uh, in, in a more citizen science approach. I'm not sure if it's... Uh... Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you, Fabi. I think the languages is really important um, too, because I think that builds that trust. I mean, I know here in um, New Zealand with um, even the vaccine, getting to our Maori and Samoa and the Pacific Island group is, you know, it's quite challenging because there's that lack of trust. So any innovations I think is really important too. There is a question. I see a question from, I don't know the name of this gentleman. Can I see a few words? Yes, go ahead. Hi, hi. Uh, this is Yuan Ning Song from uh, uh, Fudan University, Shanghai. So recently, you know, uh, uh, we are working with a company in China. So they have a technique could electrolyze the water, the pure water to oxygen and uh, uh, hydrogen. So uh, the maximum uh, oxygen flow roughly one to three liter per minute. So we send a few of this um, device to high altitude, roughly 5,400 meters. So we have a few colleagues working in team bed in a very high altitude. So this device could uh, you know, electrolyze water to oxygen and uh, uh, hydrogen. So we ask, you know, this colleague, our colleague, to inhale the oxygen and the hydrogen to release the pulmonary uh, high pulmonary, uh, you know, artery pressure to reduce the vascular constriction. It provides the same medical effect as the oxygen concentrator, but uh, it's uh, it's very cheap and uh, it's available as long as you have you know, electricity and water, you can generate oxygen and uh, hydrogen. So we also use uh, uh, long distance monitoring, you know, the um, respiratory, um, you know, breath, the heart rate, also the oxygen saturation. So it's equivalent to the, you know, um, the oxygen concentrator we compared with, uh, you know, um, a brand from Daqing from, from Japan, the, the, the company who produce oxygen concentrate. 
So we think, you know, this kind of device could be very useful for people living in high attitude area. So they can, you know, put these devices at home. So at night time, they can, you know, inhale oxygen and hydrogen, you know, at the same time. So something I want to share with you. Very clever. Is it an open source project? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we tried to do it. So we hope in the future, you know, we can, you know, do some collaboration work. <laughs> but it'd be nice to have all these things on that central site on Guard to be able to to click on and and links to get to and contacts, right? Yes. Well, what we may do eventually. Since Fabio started to do something very clever, we may link the site of Fabio with mm -hmm. what he has done, and then others may put other information, for example, mask, since it is open, it is free, mm -hmm. could be also on your site. So Fabio, I think that what you may do if you wish is to uh, expand what you have done today, which is fantastic, to free, uh, open source and free uh, well, actions. Mm. And this could be eventually, if God accepts, this could be a, a God, well, God repository may be difficult, but something with a link with the God website. Yes, yeah. Yeah, we could do a, an online forum. People can uh, add their contents and yes. it directly uh, publishes, and then we can review once a month or. But you need to review what is going to be sent mm. to you because you know there are many people who are going to send rubbish in order <laughs> to promote it. Well, it's true. It's true. <laughs> Maybe we could. Um, I didn't show it, but the last slide of the presentation is a self-assessment. So we could okay. include that in the form and say if you have enough points, then you can. Be well, but then self-assessment is good, but mm. external assessment is also useful. So I think that. The self-assessment should be assessed by one of your members because you have now what 20 or 25 people. So it is a self-assessment plus the assessment of one of the members. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Sounds um, sounds good. That's a good outcome from our workshop. Excellent. And thank you for creating the link, Fabio. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, we have one more minute. I don't know, Leticia, if you want to. Uh, we have to report back something, don't we? This is recorded and um, it's probably good to start with even like one of your summary slides because you're one of the hosts as well. I think, Fabio, can you share like maybe the open source of, of what we're sort of talking about would be good as a wrap up? <laughs> okay. And Jean maybe has a... I will send you, I will send you something. Yeah. I'm sorry, I was working on two or three other projects these days, mainly on COVID, by the way, in nursing homes. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I felt, I felt it was more important to say that the COVID Delta is a great mm -hmm. leader. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Just, mm -hmm. just came to New Zealand not long ago. <laughs> so. All okay. right, we'll see you back at, um, back at the main meeting. Yes. Thank you. And, and Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Fabio and Leticia, for making this meeting so good. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you.